If you get this wrong, it could be the most expensive repair you ever do on your house. Welcome to the Affordable High Performance Home Series. I'm Jordan Smith, I'm a design builder here in Austin, Texas, and we are trying to figure out whether we can build an affordable high performance home. And the first step to actually building an affordable high performance home is to put in a foundation. Now there's many different ways of building a foundation. You can have a crawl space, you can have a conditioned crawl space, you can have a slab on grade, you can also have a full basement, or there's other esoteric things that you can do. But in general, we're looking at crawl spaces, slab on grade, or full basement. Which one is best for where you live and what is going to be the most affordable high performance version? Can't tell you. It changes everywhere you go. Down here in central Texas, we have terrible soils. We have expansive clays that will just wreak havoc on a improperly designed foundation. But also here in Texas, the most affordable way of building is a slab on grade. So you basically just take concrete and you fill it full of rebar and you make different beams out of the dirt and fill it full of concrete. And this whole thing is strong enough to float if there's any undulations in the soil below. Or you do it even cheaper and you throw some rebar down and then you put concrete over it and then you tighten the rebar up, you do a post-tension slab and then that whole thing floats on top of the expansive soil. So that's the cheapest. In my opinion, it's not very high performance. One, having something move is not always the greatest solution, especially with the post tension. I would rather have it not move. And you can accomplish that a few different ways or a combination of them. You can either remove all the bad soil underneath the foundation and put good soil, select fill or crushed uh, limestone or whatever the engineer has called out, you can put that underneath the slab. And that way, as the expansive soils move out here, you've decoupled your foundation from that expanse of soils. Or you can make your slab so strong that even though things are moving underneath it, it's not going to move and crack. And I don't like that as much because how strong is strong enough? I would rather just move the bad soil out, put good soil in, and then put my slab. The other thing that you can do to make it high performance is you can insulate your slab. Down here in Texas, does it matter? From a comfort standpoint, absolutely. The edges of our slabs get cold. If you're walking barefoot in your house, as you approach your exterior walls in the winter, they will be cold. Does it matter from an energy usage standpoint? Some, right? I mean, it's cold, it's taking energy to heat that up and that's going outside. Does it matter? Eh, it's a little bit harder to justify down here. As we go north, it's not only easier to justify, it's almost always required if you're building a high performance home. You want to insulate all of the parts of your house that are touching the unconditioned spaces. So for your slab, you want to make sure that the cold earth is not sucking all the heat out of your slab. For a stem wall and crawl space, you want to make sure that your stem walls are insulated. So again, that heat's not getting pulled out of your house through the stem wall into the soil beyond. And for a basement, the same thing. You don't want to be down in a basement that one, is cold, and two, if you don't do your waterproofing and your insulation right on the outside, you can get water infiltration, which makes it damp, or you can get condensation where the wall is so cold that the moisture in the air is condensing on the wall and causing moisture problems. So insulation and high performance go hand in hand, especially when we're talking about foundations. Again, as we get down to Texas or more temperate climates, I'm not as adamant about it, but I think it's a really good idea. On this house, we decided that our big problem was the expanse of soils. When it gets dry, these huge cracks open up in the black dirt up there. When it rains, those cracks fill up. We're talking about inches worth of movement, and that's tons of pressure pushing against these foundations. So what we chose to do is we chose to remove all of that soil down to three foot, whatever was on the, the engineering plan. And then we backfilled that with clean soil 
in this case, it was actually crushed fines. So we, we have a quarry really close. So that was the most economical material. We pulled that and we have this limestone crushed fine base that then we dug our beams in and we put our foundation on top. I'll show you here what I'm talking about. This is the foundation here. And you can imagine that underneath here, we have these beams cut in that gives us our strength. And then in between those, we have our crushed limestone. And on top of that, we have a four inch slab. Again, I'm not giving you prescriptive like, in order to build a good foundation, you need to do this, this, and this. Don't take my word for it. Get an engineer to look at your site, give you a soil analysis, and design a slab or a crawl space or a basement for you. But make sure that it's not going to move over time. And then also, we didn't do it here in Texas, but if I was anywhere further north, even North Texas, I would insist on doing exterior insulation on the outside of my slab that ties in to the exterior insulation on the walls above to make sure that the whole building is insulated from the cold weather or the hot weather beyond. And that leads us to our next episode where we're talking about exterior insulation specifically. We put Atlas insulation on all of the walls on the outside of the wall. And next time we'll talk about why we did that. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Comment below on what your favorite foundation is. Any nightmare stories. I got a friend of mine who's redoing his whole first floor because they had to completely come in and jackhammer the slab out to redo it. And this house is less than 10 years old, 15 years old. Crazy nightmare stories about foundations. Put your own in the comments below. Enjoy this next time as we endeavor to build better. <laughs>